Once you have your printout, you're going to want to cut away the white border. This can be done by using a scissors, or it can be done by using the trimmer. If you're going to use the trimmer, line up the edge of the print with the black bar on the trimmer. Then just go ahead and cut away all four sides. When you're done cutting your paper, make sure you leave the cutting bar in the down position for safety reasons. Next, you're going to calculate the size of the paper you're going to draw to. You want the width of the computer printout to be proportionate to the width of the drawing paper, as you want the height of the computer printout to be proportionate to the height of the drawing paper. In other words, the width is to the height on the computer printout as the width is to the height on the drawing paper. The width of our computer printout is 8 inches, and the height is 9.5 inches. So 8 is to 9.5, as 12 is to the unknown side. To solve the equation, we'll cross multiply. 12 times 9 and a half, and that equals 114. We'll cross multiply the other side, and we'll get 8 question mark, or 8x. We'll call it question mark for now. We want to figure out the length of the unknown side. We're going to need to isolate it by itself. So we're going to need to divide this side by 8 in order to cancel it out. Well, whatever we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side in order to keep it equal. When we divide 114 by 8, we get 14 and a quarter inches, and that's going to equal our unknown side, which we'll call x this time. We'll round off, making our unknown side x equaling 14 inches. So we'll go ahead and cut the length side of the paper from 18 inches to 14 inches. So return to the paper cutter and cut your paper to the desired size. This one calculated to be 14 inches, so we're going to place it on the 14 inch mark and then simply pull the bar down in order to cut the paper. Remember, your drawing may be cut to a different size. Cut it to whatever size is needed for your particular drawing. Fold your computer printout paper to create a grid 4 units wide by 4 units high. Remember to get a good, clean, crisp fold with your fingernails so it makes a mark that you can easily see. When you're done folding the height into four equal sections, do the same for the width. As you see, we've created a 16-unit grid with four units across the top and four units going down the side. Using a ruler and a pencil, divide your drawing paper into four units wide by four units high to match your computer printout. Since our paper is 12 inches wide, each of these units for the width is going to be three inches. When you've made the marks at both ends and the middle, connect the dots to form the lines. 
Remember to draw these guidelines light as they are only guidelines and not part of the regular drawing. She'll make the marks for the long side of the paper. Since this paper was 14 inches, we'll divide it in half, creating a 7 inch mark, and then in half again to create a 3 and a half inch mark. Your paper may be different, so your marks will be different. Repeat the process as you did for the other side, and you'll see that your paper now resembles a 16 unit grid, just like your computer printout. Next step is to use the grid to help get proper placement and proportion of your figures and objects. Remember when you begin drawing to move from the general to the specific and begin drawing light. Once you get all the larger shapes in first, then you can move to the specific details. Darken everything in once you're sure where everything needs to be. The next step is going to be to transfer your drawing from the drawing paper to paint paper. Paint paper is much thicker and you can feel the difference. So take the paint paper from the top stack and place it in the paper cutter and cut it to the same length as you did your drawing paper. In this case it's 14 inches. Yours will be different. Place your drawing on top of the light table and then place the paint paper on top of your drawing. Turn the light table on and begin tracing. When you're done tracing, your drawing should be similar to the example shown here and you'll be ready to move on to the painting. If you finish early, work on extra credit or your portfolio until your teacher demonstrates the painting portion of this project.